I'm over here trying to live clean, okay? Hey, it's A back on your screen with another one. I hope you're all well. In this one, as the title tells, it's a continuation on the last story time we did. When I made that video and I was editing it, I'm like, oh, this isn't it. It's not funny, it's not entertaining, but I've already gotten this far. Let's just put it out and see how it goes. And to my surprise, out of all of my story times, this one was the most requested for a part two. So here we are today. I hope you guys enjoy this one. If you do, tap the like. I'm gonna keep it streamlined. Three tales today. One about an appropriate teacher. Well, she technically wasn't a teacher, but we'll get into it. Another one about a racist kid. And the third one about a kid who really roasted me. But then in the future, things all come together. The trippiest thing is teaching a youth and then 10 years, 20 years later, seeing how they've grown. To them, I'm always gonna look the same. But to me, I'm like, oh my God, you grew so much. Truth be told, I was a late bloomer in all senses of the term. So I didn't really get the whole, you grew so much. More people would be like, oh, you actually look good now. Cause I guess I look like a creature as a child. But you know what, since we're already talking about kids aging, let's start off with that story. So when I was working at a community center, this would be like what, 10, 15 years ago now? Crazy how time flies. I remember there was this one kid, I'm not gonna say anyone's names cause I figured if they ever fall on this channel, I don't know if they want that ish put out there like that. But this one kid had a best friend and it was always them. Let's call them S and A. So S and A would always be at the community center children. You would never see one without the other. And if one came within five minutes, the other one came. On this particular shift, A came in and I might've alluded to this in the last version of this video where kids would roast me all the time. Miss. How are you pretty, but you're still single? What does that have to do with you? Go do your homework. But this particular kid would always roast me on the morning shifts and like, how old are you? And I would say 18, 19. Then he would follow it up by, you would think I would learn by the third or fourth time, but I would always tell him just knowing where it was gonna go. Why do you look like that? Why do you have bags under your eyes? Are you not sleeping properly? I'd always wonder why does this kid always come for me? I'm just here doing my job. I don't know why I always have bags under my eyes. If I look at my baby pictures, they weren't there. Somewhere in between infancy, adolescence, and learning real life, the bags came. I don't know what to say, kid. So he would always roast me on my under eye bags and other things. He was a jokester. He was always roasting all of us, but that was his thing. If you noticed my skincare game and regimen, whenever I used to do those reviews for you, the ones that did the best on this channel were the under eye cream. So maybe I should be saying thank you to A. Fast forward a couple years, I was at this thing called Nuit Blanche. So here in Toronto, maybe not anymore because of the panorama, but a couple years ago, every October, I think the first Saturday of the month, they would have a event where you'd go to different parts. You'd get a map, I think now it's an app, but back then, this is how you know it's been going for a long time. You get a pamphlet map that opens up four or five ways, shows you all around the city, different art installations and exhibits you can go to. It was pretty cool. The only thing that wasn't cool is that October can be kind of cold. And this was a sun set to sunrise event. You can only imagine how chilly it gets. It was one of those things where you'd go with your significant other, or your group of friends, and you'd go and see the things. Maybe you have a little whiskey in your flask with your hot cocoa. My friend did that one year and I was like, bing, I never thought of that. It was a good vibe. It's like such a typical Canadian thing to do. If you've gone to Nuit Blanche, let me know how you like it. At one point, one of the last times I went, so let's say three, four years ago, I hear someone calling my name. And then I kind of look back and as I look back, I'm like, girl, why are you looking back? You can't even see who it is. Cause at this point, you know, living with star guards, I can't see now. I couldn't see that well back then. So I'm thinking, why did I even bother turning around? Because I'm not going to be able to see who's calling out my name. Cause sometimes I do that. I know it's really bad, but I will admit it today that on the days that I don't want to deal with pretending like I can see someone or acknowledging someone I can't see, I just pretend like I can't hear them. I know it's bad. But if you're visually impaired, you know, sometimes you get so much in your head that you don't want to accept the reality that's happening in front of your eyes, pun intended. I stop, I turn around. As soon as I turn around, I have that thought. And then the person approaches me, which is actually a good thing because now I'm getting a clear idea of who it is. It was a whole man. He says, hey, you don't remember me? And I'm thinking this looks a lot like A back in the day, but. Cause the way it is, is when you work with kids, 
especially if you work with them for a short period of time and you go on and live life and they go and grow, you can't imagine this little person became a whole human, even though that's how life goes. So he's telling me, oh, you don't remember me. And I'm like, hey, and he's like, you, you didn't have to do that. Like, just say you don't remember me. And I'm trying to tell him, no, 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 it's not that I didn't remember you. It's when I turned around, I couldn't see you. And then when you came closer, I was taking time to focus on your face. How's S? Do you still chill with him? He laughed. He said, yes. He didn't let that one go, though. He looped back and said, why you got to lie? I said, lie about what? You said you couldn't see me. Just say you didn't remember me. I said, no, I have an eye disease. I'm legally blind now. I didn't see you. Oh, come on. You don't have to lie. It's okay. My friend who's very blunt turns to him. She's like, no, no, no. She's legally blind. She actually has an eye disease. And he's kind of looking at her like she's crazy. And it's funny because she is someone that I met maybe two years before this. But because he knew me from before I was blind and she only knew me since I became legally blind, it was such a dissonant moment where one person is trying to convince someone from my past that I'm no longer who they remember me to be. And it was just all types of awkward, but also at the same time funny. That's why I usually pretend like I can't hear when people call my name because of the awkward moment of trying to focus on their face to even see who they are, to remember what place they were in my life from the past. It's happened to me many times before, but I can do another story time on that anyway. That's story number one. Story number two, Let's do the racist kid and we'll end off with the inappropriate teacher lady chick. So story number two, I was working at a waiting pool. I don't even know if those exist anymore. For those of you who know, you know that's the place that a lot of toddlers and little picnics would go where they would play in water that was never higher than say your knee or maybe even half calf. Trying to describe this sounds so dangerous. Some of the things that we got away with in the 80s, 90s and aughts for kids, Pebbles in a playground, why? That's why I have a Harry Potter scar on my forehead. This, a wading pool is a very shallow concrete pool with water, sometimes sprinklers sprouting out of the middle or from a fixture, whatever. A lot of little kids like playing there. This particular wading pool is huge. It's probably no cap bigger than my entire apartment. That's how big this wading pool was. It wasn't deep, but it was big. And at this waiting pool, there was this kid that would come all the time. A lot of kids were regular since there was a housing neighborhood just next door. And down past the field across the street was a community center. So we were busy all the time. Sometimes we had 60 kids in the pool at one time. So now that I painted a picture this particular day, this kid that I've seen come time and time again, a little problematic, but honestly, which kid isn't, comes to the waiting pool, gets in a kerfuffle with another kid. Mind you, I should also put out there that this kid is white, the other kid that's in the situation is black. Out of nowhere, end bombs, end bombs, end bombs, end bombs, end bombs. And mind you, this kid is like five, six, maybe seven years old. So I'm in a state of shock, like, not to say anyone should say it at any time or any point in their life. It makes more sense if the kid's like a preteen or even a teenager, that's when you're really trying and cursing and whatever. This was, this is like a rug rat. So he's throwing the N-bombs and other parents and other kids are looking at him N-bombing the black kid. So here goes me. I popped up as quick as Migos did with Joe Budden. Walked over to that kid and I said, you can't say that. And then the kid started giving me attitude. <sighs> he, didn't, he didn't call me an N-word, but he gave me a little bit of attitude. I said, you need to bring the sauce level down and you're not allowed back at this playground until you learn. You're banned for two days. I don't even know why in my mind at that time I said a two day probation or ban but it just seemed like the right thing to do then I turned to the black kid and I said don't take on what he said you're not an n-word he's just using it to hurt you that kid I think just ran off and played I think he was more shocked that someone would call him that word and I was worried because I was afraid that he would go home and tell his parent what happened and then they'd come and confront me so I just I said I don't want no smoke I get paid 1025 for this job I don't need this the next day comes and who comes his mom and I recognized it was mom because even though this kid was left unattended all the time once in a while when she'd run to the corner store she'd stop by maybe give him a snack or candy or whatever a lot of these kids weren't eating properly by the way they'd come in the morning and I'd be giving my lunch or buying snacks to share with them since their parents just let them play at the playground all day waiting pool all day until we're locking up and sometimes they'd still be there maybe once in a while they'd go home for lunch for a little bit and come back I said, this is so sad. Point of the story is, Mama Race is coming over 
to confront me about banning her son. And I said, so you're aware of what your son said in front of other children directed at a black child. Where did he get that from? I think a lot of people assume that I'm weak or meek and things are not just, ain't nothing to play with over here. I just asked her up front and she kind of was taken aback. I don't know what she was expecting though. Why would you come confront me knowing what your son said not expecting me to call that out. That's the part that I found super weird, even to this day. After that, she was trying to say that banning him for two days wasn't fair. And I said, there needs to be a punishment because it's not okay for someone to say something racist to anyone. I don't allow that on my playground. And at the end of the day, your kid has never been problematic. I've been working at this waiting pool for, I think at that point, three years. So three summers, I'm seeing these kids grow. Obviously he's getting it from somewhere. Maybe he got it from YouTube. Maybe he got it from gaming. But at the end of the day, kids take in a lot of things from other areas and avenues of life and they don't say it with that much oomph unless they've heard somebody else in real life say it. So I knew if it's not her, it's a man damn she's with or his dad or some youth in his household that makes it okay to say the n-word and that's not okay with me. Did I say all of that? No, but I think by not saying that much, I said enough. And the kid was banned for two days and he came back and he never, ever gave me any problems. Last story before we wrap up. I'm glad that we did just three because these stories have so many details that if I try to cram in more, you wouldn't get the essence. <laughs> so this last story is when I worked Actually, I won't even tell you where I work because I'm pretty sure she still works there. In order to tell this story, I have to give you a little hierarchy breakdown. Here goes me, new kid on the block. There was someone else who started around the same time as me, but was in a different, let's call it department, but not necessarily. And then there was this person and this person was our supervisor. And she also had five years of seniority on us. One day I come into work and this is after me being there for like six, seven, eight, maybe even almost a year at this point, whatever it was, I've been there enough time for me to still be like, mm. cause there's things she said over the year that I was kind of like, but then you get used to someone. So you're just like, oh, that's just her. But this never sat right with me. So what happened was I come into work one day I'm setting up and there's a preteen. Essentially, I don't even think she's 13. She might've been 12 on the cusp of 13, but a preteen. And she was skipping school to go do things no 12, 13 year old should be doing with someone who was five years her age. I think if that's the story goes. All I know is giving statutory, okay? I remember thinking this is highly inappropriate that I know this and I can't do anything about it. But also that the person who's more senior is egging this girl on. So pretty much she would come in and I would overhear while I'm setting up doing my thing. She would pretty much have conversations about what happened the other night or what was happening the next day. And this particular time, the grown woman fixed herself to say, go girl, get, you know that, the man she's intimate with. I can't even call it that because how is it consensual when you're 12 and the guy's 17? You know that this child is doing things no child should be doing and you're cheering them on. I sat with that for a few days because of course this wasn't anything new. She had been seeing the guy for a couple months at this point. It's just that was the most alarming conversation I had overheard. The supervisor would share things with me. And initially when she shared things with me months before, I thought it was more from a, I'm looking out for her because I've been in that situation. Kids are going to do what they want to do anyway. So I might as well give her good advice type of thing, which I still thought was convoluted and contorted and all the ways wrong. But I try to rationalize it. But once that was said, when she was actually cheering a child on to be intimate with an adult, well, 17 still a different type of kid. I know I thought I was grown when I was 17, but I feel like I'm still not grown and I'm twice that. So the point of the story is I was so shocked that I sat on it and then I reported it. This is all types of disturbing. Guess what happened? Nothing. And your girl quit because principals and I also wasn't getting paid enough. I just like, I couldn't stay in this environment. So that wraps up three more stories. 
more coming to my mind, but we'll save that for another time. So if you guys enjoy this one, if there's another story time you want a part two of, say like working, other jobs, or blind funny tales, or whatever else I've shared with you guys, you know I got stories on stories. Let me know down below. And until the next video, stay safe, stay sane, stay blessed. Love and later.